Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. Arrows were around for a surprisingly long time for a struggling backmarker team, surviving for nearly 20 years, not including their time as footwork from 1991 to 1996. Their survival is made even more impressive considering some of the lemons who raced for them. So in this video let's take a look at the 10 worst drivers to ever race in an Arrows. This is solely based on their time at Arrows, but considering their penchant for pay drivers, they could probably make it on a few worst of lists. I am not including the likes of Jacques Villeneuve Sr, Mike Fackwell, Alan Jones and Bern Schneider because they didn't really have enough races to do anything. So remember to subscribe to the channel and let's look at the 10 worst Arrows Formula 1 drivers based on their time at Arrows. Number 10, Jos Verstappen. Now this is entirely based on their time at Arrows because some of these drivers are not that bad. And in fact, Arrows did have a good roster of drivers throughout their history. So much so that Jos Verstappen makes for the list at number 10. The older Verstappen has to be one of the biggest victims of hype in racing history, jumping straight in at the top with Benetton in 1994. He slid down the field quick, joining Arrows in 2000, having not scored points since the third round of 1996 at Argentina, driving a footwork, which is kind of an Arrows but different. He did score points for Arrows, managing a fourth place in Italy in 2000, and this was towards the end of Arrow's existence. They were not good cars, but Jos Verstappen should have accomplished more in his career than drive to the Simtech, Tyrrell, Arrows and Minardi, and he's at number 10 for having to live vicariously through his son for the rest of time. Number 9, Alex Caffey. The Brazilian did not have the hype Jos Verstappen had coming into Formula 1. In fact, Alex Caffey lucked his way onto the scene getting a drive with Osella in 1987 and getting a full-time drive for the team because they liked how sensible he was. Kind of boring, really. His career never left the back of the field with teams like Osella, Scuderia Italia, Andrea Moda and Arrows. He raced for Arrows footwork in 1990 and had a rough year. He had some good results here and there, but it was a season of injuries, crashes and failures to qualify. He did score all the team's points for 1990 and his stock still managed to rise. Destroyed in 1991 with footwork as a terrible car, saw Alex Caffey's career end with a lot of failed to qualifies and a bad spell at Andrea Moda that saw him not enter a race with the team and his Formula 1 career came to an end in 1992. Number 8, Michele Alboreto. Partnering Alex Caffey in 1990 at Arrows was experienced race winner Michele Alboreto who made the poor life decision to join Arrows in an attempt to keep his career going after leaving Ferrari for Tyrrell and LaRousse. He really should have just retired after Ferrari his year with Arrows was poor, he scored no points, a finish behind teammate Alex Caffey, even failed to qualify for a few races. He did manage a number of top 10 finishes and stayed with the team as they transitioned into footwork for the next two years. After an awful 1991, he had a better 1992 before seeing out his career with Scuderia Italia and Minardi. Number 7, Marabaldi. The Italian star of sports car racing made his debut for Arrows all the way back in 1982. It was also his debut in Formula 1 after winning the European Formula 3 series in 1981. He failed to qualify for a few races and struggled to match teammate Mark Sura. He did score points at the Dutch and Austrian Grand Prix, although the latter was a race of attrition. Other than that, he only finished in the top 10 a few times and was gone for 1983, moving to Alfa Romeo and finishing with Spirit after 1985. He did have a lot of success in sports car racing, winning with Sauber Mercedes in 1990 and winning with 24 Hours of Le Mans in 1994. Number 6, Taranasuke Takagi. This was entirely not Takagi's fault. The car broke down constantly. There was a couple of crashes, but mostly it was endless engine issues. But saw Takagi have a really sour 1999 Formula 1 season. It was only his second year in Formula 1 after a pointless year with Tyrrell in 1998, and he would score no points in 1999. He would return to Japan and win the Super Formula Series in 2000, as well as spells in kart and IndyCar. A popular driver who failed to accomplish too much in Formula 1. Number 5, Chico Serra, another Brazilian and one who only made 4 starts for Arrows. It wasn't terrible, he did qualify for all 4 races and only failed to finish one of those races, and the 3 races he did finish he managed to get in the top 10, but it was unspectacular. He usually qualified lower down the order and was often stuck in the midfield. May not be terrible, but Chico Serra had a brief career, joining Arrows in 1983 after a couple of years with the Fittipaldi team. Chico Serra found some success in his native Brazil and both he and his son Daniel Serra are three-time Brazil stock car champions. Number four, Enrique Bernoldi. A pay driver who also happened to be from Brazil. Arrows were apparently fond of a Brazilian. Enrique Bernoldi was the usual example of an incompetent pay driver, but to be honest, there have been worse drivers in Formula One. 
In fact, he did okay with what he had, and in fact had the same problem as Takagi. His car broke down all the time. One of Arrow's final drivers, he raced the entire 2001 series for the team. He failed to finish 10 of the 17 races, and whilst the team died midway through 2002, Bernaldi still retired 8 more times, as well as failing to qualify for one race. To be honest, Bernaldi is nowhere near as bad as his time at Arrows suggests, but it was an awful run of results, and that's why Bernaldi is the fourth worst Arrows driver ever. Number three, Brian Henton. Whilst Brian Henton may have only had three races for Arrows, it was so bad I feel compelled to put him at number three. On his debut in South Africa, he failed to qualify, losing out to Jean-Pierre Jarriers Ocella by almost three seconds. Henton was three seconds off the pace of an Ocella. That's not a good sign. He failed to qualify in Brazil too, and whilst he qualified for the race in Long Beach, he spun out of it. So whilst it was only three races, it was bad. In fact, his whole career in Formula 1 was pretty bad. He was a European Formula 2 champion in 1980, but his sporadic races for Lotus, Surtees and Tyrrell, amongst others, yielded 17 did not qualify out of 36 races, and no points scored ever. His best was a 7th in Germany with Tyrrell in 1982, five races from the end of his career. He was replaced at Arrows by Mark Sura, who did a lot better. Number 2, Rolf Stommelen. The German race for many of Formula 1's great teams, such as Brabham, Surtees, Embassy Hill, Heskiff and Eiffel and Caravans. That always blows me away. How can a caravan company sponsor a Formula 1 team? You'll be telling me condoms are a good fit next. He never had much success, a single podium in his only full Formula 1 season with Brabham in 1970, and everything else was a struggle. By the time he joined Arrows in 1978, the end was nigh. Arrows in their first season were not competitive yet, but Ricardo Patrese managed better than Stommelen. He'd get a couple of top 10s to start with, but towards the end he struggled to qualify for races and that was the end of his Formula 1 career. He had some success in sports car racing, but was sadly killed in a crash in 1983 racing in America. Number 1. Siegfried Storr this was so bad it ended with a badly injured Arrows mechanic and Siegfried Storr retiring from racing before the end of the year. The Italian did not achieve much in his brief time in Formula 1. His single season with Arrows in 1981 was spattered with failures to qualify and a lot of failures to finish. His season took a major turn for the worst when in Belgium, one of teammate Patrese's mechanics ran onto the started race to try and fire up Patrese's car, but Storr ploughed into the back of the stricken vehicle and injured the mechanic. He crashed out of qualifying for his final race in Italy and retired from motorsport for good. But he has a place in racing history as the worst driver Arrows ever hired. So there are the worst 10 drivers ever employed by the Arrows Formula 1 team. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because I will be doing a best 10 Arrows drivers ever. Leave your thoughts in the comments below, leave a like and tell your friends. Thank you for watching and have a good one.